is $14. 20% of 14 is, no, okay, 20% of a dollar is two cents. So two times 14 is 28 cents. Okay, no, no. $20 is 20% of 14 if, the, mm -hmm. no. $208. This is painful. Really happy you guys stuck around to see this. I can't believe I've never seen it before. How long does he go on? Uh, in about 15 minutes he'll get frustrated and just leave some jewels. He leaves the waitress jewelry? For my birthday, he gave me some cheap ass frame with his picture glued on the glass. Ah, uh, not jewelry, jewels. Just loose jewels. Haven't you guys ever wondered why we're allowed to stay here so late after they close? Oh, huh. yeah. Makes sense. Hey, beautiful mine, they're gonna need to open soon for breakfast. Would you like some help? No. Yeah, who taught you basic math? S se server, s severe s Snape Hogwarts? I got there. This is stupid, this is such a pointless skill. Name one time in your life that math has actually made your life better, other than this exact moment for which I have found a suitable workaround. Buddy, buddy, math does not exist to make things better, it exists to empower you to tear things apart. Michael, no, that's not the... Actually, let's see where this goes. I got nowhere to be. I do like power. I'll show you. Think of the most comforting thing you can, something beyond reproach, and then the three of us will ruin it with math. But, uh, the average human being only uses 17% of his brain. Boy, you realize what that means? We don't use a full uh, 64%. <laughs> the Cosby Show. Oh my. How could anyone besmirch the hollowed name? It holds up. The show's universe holds up. Does it? Let's see. Dan, I'm gonna need you for footnotes. Got it. Cliff Huxtable celebrates his 50th birthday in season three. Turning 50 is a monumental event in a man's life. Oh, Lord, who let this child in now? Two years later, his wife Claire celebrates her 46th birthday in season five. Why is there only one candle? Mom's 46. Episode 20, entitled Cliff's 50th Birthday, and episode 22, entitled Birthday Blues, respectively. You read very fast. So, simple math tells us that Cliff Huxtable was 52 at the time of his wife's 46th birthday, because each season the kids progress one grade in school, which makes him six, maybe seven years older than Claire, right? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, do you like rubies? Then in season seven, they celebrate their 27th anniversary together. Have you and mom figured out what you're gonna do for your anniversary? We certainly have. Good to see you after 27 years. Yes. <laughs> Which means that when they got married, Claire was only 21. Awfully young. So? That's a prerogative. I mean, she can get married whenever. Oh no, I am defending the Cosby Show. But here's the real dagger. In season one, we find out that Cliff went to Hillman College for one very specific reason. He knew that's where Claire wanted to go. Which one would you have chosen? Hillman. Really? Sure. Why? Because that's where your mother was going. So, in the very first year of his adulthood, Cliff Huxtable made a decision about where he wanted to go to college based on the ambitions of a 12-year-old girl that he was interested in. Oh, gross. Michael's right, they even dated while he was at Hillman. She couldn't go to her high school dance because he had junior finals that week. No, I didn't go to my prom. Why not? Well, your father was away at school, he had to take final exams so he couldn't come. So that puts him at 21 and her at 15. Oh no. The fact is Heathcliff Huxtable used years of his adult life to tinker with the mind of an impressionable young girl just to make sure she would love jazz and stupid sweaters enough that she'd have no choice but to fall in love with him, and he is the protagonist! Math! Wow. Gosh, Michael, that was really well done. I don't think in a million years I could ever sh just got one. You did? Oh, Cheers! Yes, great show. Hey, cheers to cheers. Hey. Is it a great show, though? Oh, no, don't. Don't hurt it. Don't hurt it with math. Sorry. Norm Peterson's bar tab. It's a running gag in the show that he's got this massive bar tab that he's racked up. Sam, at one point, takes out these giant binders that are supposed to represent his tab. Oh, Sammy, my tab. Yeah, but that's just a goof. Norm likes to have a few. Every single day in every single episode. Across the whole run of the show, three people show up in 100% of the episodes. Sam. Carla and Norm, two of them who have to be there for work, and Norm, who has to be there because he's Norm. 
And we know that this isn't the only bar in town that he goes to with this frequency. Because when he walks into Gary's Old Town Tavern, that whole bar crew there says, No Yes, but he never actually settles his tab, which means that we can't calculate what it would be. Not a math crime. He settles his tab once, and we can use that as a sample size. When Rebecca takes over the bar, she cuts him off when she realizes his tab is over $850. What's the big deal? What's he over? 10, 20 bucks? 837. Now, we know his entire account was wiped clean two seasons earlier, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average cost of a beer in 1985 was $1.75. So, we know that he had at least 486 beers over the course of two seasons. That is, that is several. Now, imagine someone you know in your real world was going to the same bar every single night. He loses his job. Fire me, coach. <laughs> Struggles to find steady work for six years. A real good friend who, who hasn't worked in years. Separates from his wife. She's not the same since Vera's been out of town. Gains weight. Look at that, we go all the way back to when we didn't even know your name. Skinny guy at the end of the bar. Tells everyone he's moving to Bora Bora. I'm uh, sailing to Bora Bora, gonna live in a hut. And then instead secretly moves into a closet in a bar. Okay. Why isn't anyone helping Norm? He's clearly spiraling and no one, not one person on that show, reaches out to be like, having a tough time, buddy, or maybe you should seek out some counseling, or, you know, even give a shit that he's driving himself home every night. No! Instead, they keep plying him with free drinks, keep letting him run up that tab, and laugh at his stupid jokes about his sad wife. What's new, no, I'm most of my wife. Wow, that is... Nothing! I got it! Frasier! Katie, we just did cheers. No, no, Frasier from Frasier. Guys, Frasier is a terrible father, and math Proves it! Oh, this was such a bad idea. What, you like Frasier? You know I do. Frasier's son, Frederick, was born in 1989 in the Cheers episode, The Stork Brings a Crane. I'm a father. I'm a father. And Frederick is 15 in the last season of Frasier, which aired in 2004, which means that the seasons chronologically line up with the actual years. That means that when Frederick was four years old, Frasier not only got a divorce, but moved across the country from Boston to Seattle. And what did he do every episode, huh? Fight Lilith for custody of his son? Uh, try to spend as much time with him as possible? No. He tried scheming to get tickets to the symphony. Wednesday it was the symphony. Or trying to lure some new woman to his family's f***ing You think of them as Laura and Beth, but tonight, they are just two live, breathing, available female bodies who want us. Okay, well, maybe he needed some time to find himself again. You know, they say it's important for parents not to be defined by the role parent. Frasier ran for 11 years, right? 264 episodes. Do you want to know how many times Frederick makes an appearance, huh? Nine. From the ages of four to 15, Frederick saw his father nine times. And everybody who watched the show was like, eh, you know what, that seems normal. Anyways, I really hope that Niles builds up the courage to cheat on his wife with this clairvoyant illegal alien. F I hate this show. You hate the... Frasier is a joy. Finally, the upper crust get a fair shake and you want to tear it down. Also, Eddie was two different dogs, but they both died. I know that's not technically math related, but if we're throwing logs on the fire. You know what? Friends. You like friends? Do you like friends? Of course. Good. Okay, you know how Phoebe does that altruistic thing where she has uh, three kids for her brother? Yeah. Okay, well, what if it doesn't add up? The number of babies? Why are you shaking? I I'm saying what if they're not her brother's kids because the, the, the pregnancy is weird. The, it's the wrong time. I'm very angry. Wait, I think you might be right. So Phoebe's brother asked her to help out with the pregnancy in season four. Hey, Uterus. Maybe late January, early February. We don't know, but we know that in the episode right before it, Monica still had her Christmas tree up in her apartment, and then when we get to the one about Phoebe's uterus, it's gone. <laughs> We're not there yet? Oh, uh, okay. So Phoebe gets the procedure done the very next episode, but even if we don't take into account the hormones that she'd have to take, we know that we have to wait to a certain point in her cycle before she can get the egg injection. So almost definitely late January, early February. That's when she gets pregnant. And doesn't she take a pregnancy test the same day she gets her in vitro and it says that she's already pregnant? You're gonna have a baby. They're gonna have a baby. I mean, that's, that's weird, right? You're not supposed to be able to even tell from those tests until two weeks after the end of your cycle. Trust me. You don't know what month she gives birth, though. Okay, we know she gives birth two weeks after Ross and Emily's wedding because Rachel just gets back from Ross's honeymoon in Greece for two weeks alone. And that's right when Phoebe's water breaks as she's on the way to Atlantic City. <laughs> 
show. And we know Ross pushed the wedding up to just a month away, a week after proposing to Emily. Get married. And he proposes to Emily in the same episode where Monica gives season Nick's tickets to Joey and Chandler in exchange for the apartment. Season four, episode 19. The one with all the haste. So? So, Katie, if you knew a single sh about basketball, you'd know that the regular season ends at the beginning of April and that Nick's season tickets don't account for the playoffs. So in order for those tickets to be valuable to the guys, it has to be March at the latest. Maybe the beginning of April if they're idiots. They are. So, one month and two weeks after the beginning of April is May. And Phoebe was pregnant in February. Oh my god. Oh my god. Seven month pregnancy! Four. Four month pregnancy! I did it! Those babies would not be viable. Those cannot be her brother's kids. The test said that she was already pregnant because she'd already been pregnant for months. Those are Phoebe's babies. And it killed her to give them up and she still did it and I solved it with math. Aw. That's like really sad. Oh well, Rachel was pregnant for over a year. That show is notoriously bad with knowing how long babies cook. So what are the implications of that? Rachel pretends to be pregnant until... Or maybe she was just hiding it until she could make sure that it matched up with Ross's timeline? What? It's not how it works. Everybody knows if a woman keeps the baby inside for too long, her body reabsorbs it. It's like when you wait too long to poop. Really happy you guys were here to see this. Michael, where do you think your poop goes when you don't poop? Mine? Mine just goes in an alley next to my house. What do you mean? When, when you, you don't, don't poop, poop. When you absorb it into your body. Where does my poop go when I don't poop? Yes. You're not even making sense. Listen to yourself. What's the longest amount of time you've gone without a poop? Let's solve something else with math right here. Hey, you like stand-up? Come see the Cracked Stand-Up Show. It's happening March 23rd at Meltdown Comics in Los Angeles. If you want to see amazing stand-up comedians, including our own Tom Ryman, go to nerdmeltla.com slash tickets. And if you want to see me without a shirt on, you're rude. <laughs>